Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Premier Playback. And this is our first episode. My name is The Riot, Xander Garcia. And I am Sabrina Ireland, the one and only witch of Premier. That is right. So I say we've got a lot to go over. Let's dive into it during this premiere week in premiere wrestling. And we start with Attitude. Attitude begun its 11th season this past Monday. And with the new season came a new general manager in Isaiah Jenkins. He started the show by coming out and saying he's excited by the newfound power he wields and promises the fans a new attitude like they have never seen before. Then he began belittling the crowd as he is talking about how he is going to make Attitude great again. TLC's music hits and TLC comes out stating that Attitude belongs to the fans and the fans alone. Zay laughed at TLC and said TLC is basically now his trained circus monkey. They started arguing and Zay shoves TLC, which TLC goes to shove him back, but Zay stops him short by saying, I thought you were everyone's hero. What kind of hero doesn't respect proper authority? TLC stood down, which Zay follows up with. See, Circus Monkey. Then Zay's attitude. Everyone once knew was gone. There is no mercy here. There is no fairness here. The only rules made are the rules he makes. And guess what? Only he can break them. Zay called for security to enter and hold TLC. And Zay told the fans that attitude they once knew is gone and rules are made and starts to wail on TLC. And the remainder of the fans, this is where heroes go to die. This is the new era of attitude. My attitude stated Zay, Isaiah Jenkins. Welcome to my world. Then he reminded TLC he has a match in a few with British Bulldozer and also good luck. And that's when British Bulldozer comes out in his attitude debut against TLC. And he just starts beating on TLC, not giving TLC a chance to defend himself. So TLC comes back. And Bulldozer quickly grabs the offense back. And TLC, with a few pins resulting in only a two count, but TLC regains control. Goes for a quick cover, but Grayson leaves the ring and starts chatting with the audience. Which doesn't make any sense. TLC goes after him, and Bulldozer follows TLC out, grabbing a chair and hits TLC with it tossing TLC back in the ring and goes for the pin and the win. Then we went backstage to see Fire and Wish in the locker room. Fire stated that there are too many cheats in the women's division of Attitude. Fire then comes up with an idea to combat them. Fire says we may need some help and then Fire wished for an army. Wish pulls out a piece of paper, handing it to Fire. Fire opened the piece of paper, and the piece of paper said, Wish granted. And after that, we saw Nay interview Karma and Rebel about how nice Karma was last season and her number one contender shot at the Extreme Women's title. Karma says there is no more being nice. She played a part she needed to play to get her title shot. And now she's sending Rox a warning to watch her back. And after that, we see Danny the Dominatrix come out with none other than my co-host here, Sabrina. 
the dominatrix went up against Cassidy Payne, where the dominatrix was just coming out strong left and right. However, Cassidy was not going to be strong-armed by Ms. Danny. And thus, Cassidy fought back. Ms. Danny came into the match thinking it was going to be an easy win, but Cassidy went for a pin that got a two and a half count, which made the dominatrix think otherwise. All through the match, Ms. Danny is getting frustrated. She can't keep Cassidy down and starts making mistakes, to which Cassidy capitalized on those with high-flying moves. The dominatrix does a roundhouse kick to Cassidy's chest and goes to remove the turnbuckle, but Grayson catches her. Thus, the dominatrix begins to argue. This distracted the dominatrix long enough for Cassidy to get a roll-up pin for the win, during which the celebration thereafter Fire comes out with Wish, applauding Cassidy for the win. And despite the cheat attempt, Fire recruits Cassidy for her army. That's right. And right before our main event is about to start, Romeo Artfall comes out with Walter Bright, who is supposed to fight Danny Thunder, and explains why they have teamed up with Vigilante Hunter. That with Hunter, with them, they can further their advantage against Danny. Romeo then announces Danny won't be fighting Walter as he thought, but Vigilante Hunter instead. Now Hunter is mainly in control of the match, and Danny hits him with everything he can imagine, but Hunter will not stay down. Danny then hits Hunter with the by front three times, and even a hoe fun. But Hunter hits Danny with crossroads move from Danny's Hollywood Thunder days. As Danny is groggy, Hunter hits Danny with the Hunter's trap and goes for the cover and gets the win. Pink Moon Estates, we welcome one and all to come through and enjoy such locations as the Horse Stables, the Prime Care Medical Hospital, the PME Police Station, the Social Bar, the club, the Peacock Club and Dungeon, the bakery, the PME Cafe, and so much more. Just use the teleporter to get around and don't forget to join the in-world VIP group to make Pink Moon Estates your own. Rise began its eighth tour. That's right, this is Tour 8. They are in Rome, Italy. Yes, they are touring Rome, Italy. Alistair Blackwolf came out and welcomed everyone to Rome and Tour 8 and said it was going to be a very interesting tour. Dark Lotus went up against Matt the Model. Now, Dark Lotus started out the match by running at Matt, but Matt rolls out of the way, sending Dark Lotus to the corner hard where Matt smashes Lotus's head. But Lotus recovers quickly and power bombs Matt. Matt recovers and starts stomping on Dark Lotus and working on his legs, going for a pin, but it was just a one count. Dark Lotus gets up and spears Matt, whips him into the ropes, where Matt comes off the ropes into a big boot. Dark Lotus taunts the fans. Matt gets up mad and chop blocks Dark Lotus and gets him into a figure four. Dark Lotus crawls out of the ropes, and Matt lets go. Dark Lotus let, then hits Matt with a triple monster combo, finishing with a choke. The ref rings the bell, and Matt is out. Says Dark Lotus is the winner, and changes her mind that Matt has won. And Dark Lotus leaves with Sarah the valet. After that... Alistair and the Rise Women's Champion, the Moor again, come out to state there is no real competition at Rise and that there are only porcelain dolls in the back. Who wants to come down and face his goddess? Well, <laughs> none other than June Gloom's music hits, leaving Alistair shocked. 
That's right. Next, we see Tommy Connolly against a mystery opponent. The music plays, and it's Pognak, the Hoodoo Man, for a spot to face Christian Casanova for his men's championship. Pognak comes out strong, but Tommy fights back. And Pog gives a low blow to Tommy, but the ref doesn't see it. And Tommy falls over, and Pognak puts Tommy in an ankle lock. But Tommy drags himself to the ropes. Then another low blow kick after that and drags Tommy to the corner or to the center of the ring and puts him in a figure four. But Tommy reverses it and gets broken. And Tommy hits Pognak with a off to hold. Pognak I rakes Tommy and starts working on the body. Tommy gains control and puts Pognak in the Celtic knot. As Hiram and the cultists come out, Tommy breaks the hold and the cultists attack Tommy. The ref calls the match a DQ. Tommy wins, but Hiram recruits Pognak for his cult as a result of the win, and they all leave. Then a video played of Christian and Tommy in the locker room. Christian was talking to Tommy about their common enemy and maybe teaming up. Christian then told Tommy to give it some thought, and Tommy said he wanted nothing but an honest shot from the beginning. Then Tommy says, screw it, I'm in, let's do this. Now, Christian Casanova and Tommy Connolly have formed a new team in Rise. Mira Zibatsu comes down to the ring. Rina gets a mic and cuts a promo about how she and Muerta Nomas are the new Rise Women's Tag Team Champion. How they are going to rule the division. Alistair's music hits. He tells them that he is proud of them and that this is going to be a very exciting tour. Like, tonight? You two are going to put those titles on the line. And it will be against the newly formed tag team of Yuki and Karina. Karina and Rina started out with Rina taking control, but Karina not backing down. Rina eye breaks Karina and whips her into the corner and tries choking Karina out. But then she goes for a pin, but it was only a one count. Karina comes back hitting Rina with some big moves for a pin but that was only a two count as Morta comes and breaks it up Rina is frustrated and tags in Morta who, who stomps a mud hole in Karina and tags Rina back in then she goes for a pin but Yuki breaks it on a two then the ref yells her at her to get out Karina and Morta are fighting it out Karina gets the upper advantage for a moment and tags in Yuki. Yuki comes in against Morta and hits her with a few moves and goes for a pin, but it was just a two. Then she hits Morta with a big splash for another pin, but again, it was just a two count. All four women enter the ring and start fighting it out and end up with a double count out. After a long day, or even week, of doing all the things we do here in Second Life, Sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves, whether it be creating, organizing, socializing, performing, or exploring. It does tend to take a toll. So come on down to Peak Moon Estates and visit the Prime Care Medical Hospital so we can help you take care of you. That leads us into Overload Season 21. And the premiere was and did happen already. In the first match, we saw Harry Holland take on Ryan Jameson, in which Ryan made it a quick and painless loss for Harry. Because Harry only got to hit a couple of moves before Ryan hit him with the hangover and took him down hard and fast. That's right. And after that, Ace arrived with his dad and his new girlfriend, Raven. His dad and Raven wished 
Ace luck and know that they are always rooting for him. Ace thanks them and walks in and sees a man that was homeless last season, looking a lot better, and asks Ace for his autograph and reminds Ace that he got himself together since Ace bought him the ticket last season. Ace signs the autograph but refuses to take the credit for the homeless man's life getting better and gives all the credit to the man himself. Following that, we see Queen Gina Rose, which we have not seen since the Royal Clash. But she is definitely on overload, and she is not pulling any punches. She began speaking and bragging about herself, I should say, having taken a break for the past year. She then went on to talk about how re-entering wrestling at pre Premier, yes, Premier Wrestling. She has re-entered officially. And now she's willing to work her way to the title. Because, of course, everyone are all commoners. And she is Queen Gina Rose. Kenny interrupts, telling Queen Gina Rose that while she's been gone, Candy has been working her ass off. She will have to go through Candy in order to get her any kind of idea of a title shot. Then we saw Angelina Lane versus Kaylee the Baker. That's right. Kaylee comes out strong, but she is no match for Angelina, who fights back. Kaylee hits Angelina with the cake buster and goes for a pin, but just gets a one. Both women start fighting it out, Again, trading offensive and defensive blows. Uh, but again, Angelina takes control and gets only a two count. Kaylee comes back and hits Angelina with the buttercream frosting for a two and wonders what it's going to take to keep Angelina down. Angelina goes for a rock bottom and a pen, but only gets just one. She keeps on the offense and hits her finisher, the spear, for the win. And after that, we got to hear from Vince Aftermath, who comes out and explains to everyone and to all the people who believed he was unhappy about the Royal Clash. However, that is not the case. In fact, it is far from it. More to come on that. He then introduces his soon-to-be wife... My, uh, mm-hmm. my partner right here, Sabrina. So congratulations on the mm-hmm. engagement. And then he kisses her, explaining that he is happier than ever. But then he gets back to business and explains how Ace likes to be the hero so much. And that tonight, plus going forward for the rest of the season, we are going to see just how much of a hero Ace can be. Each week, Ace will come to this ring and fight in a cage match with a time set to five minutes. If he cannot get to the person that Vince selects, they will be put through the table or maybe they will be beaten with a belt or hmm, maybe they will be set on fire. And he has just the person to ensure this happens. Riot! Wait, me! That's me! Yes, that's me. Of course, I had to come out and explain that I disbanded lag. And in this, I joined Vince. People think it's a vendetta against Ace, but oh no. Oh no, it is, it is far more complex and far more widespread than that. I, <laughs> so weird, went on to explain that it's because I am tired of all these little heroes and these little villains going after the regime, trying to take down the administration, which then in turn will close Premier Wrestling down. I am against that. I am fighting for Premier, and I am fighting to keep it open while everybody else thinks that they got to fight to keep it closed for some reason, but they will excuse it away pathetically. Either way, we all just depart as happy as can be. Well, (laughs) let's be honest, once we got backstage... Vince and Sabrina went off somewhere else, and I went off in a completely different direction. Don't ever get that twisted. 
I tell. I'm telling right now. I I do not hang out with you two. I do not get involved in that. I'm I'm not. No, that's that's you two. But I am definitely going to fight to make certain premier stays open. Yes. Then after that, we saw a video of the women's champion Natty Darkmoon and her manager Mr. Magic talking about how Barbie won the royal class and has been guaranteed a shot at Natty's title. However, she needs to train even more harder to make sure her title stays where it belongs. Then finally, the next match, or should I say next, in the next match that followed that, it was the debut of Lyria Gruber. She went up against Candy Perez, who we had seen earlier in the night. Lyria comes out strong, but Candy is a veteran and quickly shows Lyria she is no pushover, putting Lyria in the tarantula, then a swinging netbreaker, going for a pin, but it just gets a two. Lyria gets a second win and shows Candy she's no pushover either. Lyria hits Candy with a flying splash for a two count. Both women are fighting it out. Multiple pin attempts left, right, back, and center, punching each other, kicking each other all over the place. Finally, Candy catches Lyria with a DDT and raises her hands to show this is over. But no. Queen Gina Rose comes out and attacks Candy. The ref rings the bell and the match results in a no contest. That's right. Then we see Ryan trying to call the GM. But it just goes to his answering machine for a third time. And Ryan is getting angry that the GM is not returning his calls. But he returns to his other job as a bounty hunter and searches his PC for local bounties. And finds a very old warrant. He prints it off and goes to collect it. Then we saw uh, Derek Zane. Yes, the heavyweight champion of the world. Derek Zane. He comes out to the ring and says he doesn't, he does not, he does not want to be an idol champion. So he may not be able to offer up the belt, but does offer to face whoever wishes to come out first. Well, not other than Chris Hollywood answers the call. He comes out and tells Derek how he now realizes what Derek Zane was trying to teach Chris Hollywood, what he was trying to get across to him the last time they faced each other. Derek Zane agreed to the match happening right then and there. Both men are strong fighters and show off their skills, but Chris takes control and goes for a pin. Derek Kicking out really quick and realizing that Chris Hollywood has indeed upped his game. He gets up, whips Chris, who comes back off the ropes and hits Derek with his signature move, the Aurora Borealis. But that only got a two count. Ah, Derek Zane, the champ, kicking out of it. He gets up and he whips him again. Comes off the ropes. But then Derek hits Chris Hollywood with the finisher, the Hollywood ending. No, no, I had that backwards, right? That was backwards. Huh, maybe in another world. Chris Hollywood comes off the ropes and hits Derek with his finisher, the Hollywood ending, for the three count. And surprisingly, Chris Hollywood beats the world heavyweight champion in a non-title match. Hello, all you equestrianites. Looking for a fun, inclusive location where you can let your inner horse out? Well, come on down to Pink Moon Estates and check out the horse stables and equestrian zone for all your pony and beyond needs. Remember, rent a horse, save a cowboy, and go for a ride around Pink Moon Estates. We'll be seeing ya. Then we have the Rise show number two, which was on Sunday. And Alistair came back out and welcomed everyone once again, in case they weren't there for the first show. And that led right into the Men's Tag Team Champions Asylum come out to talk about how they ran off the competition and laughed the fact that Christian has teamed up with Tommy. 
they have already run off the guard and Beauties and the Beast. All of a sudden, music plays for murder. Zachary Achilles and Dark Lotus. Whew. They remind the Asylum it's not going to be that easy. The Asylum agree to a match. Zachary and Alex start out and trade blows and offense back and forth. But Zachary stomps Alex, then goes and tags in Dark Lotus. Dark Lotus comes in, continues the stomping on Alex, whips him into his own corner, where Just Insane blindly tags Alex Camino. Dark Lotus, however, rushes quickly and unleashes on Justin. Justin, getting his second win, comes back and hits Dark Lotus with the black hole slam. Then a flying elbow. After that, he picks up Dark Lotus, who turns and shoves Justin. Dark Lotus quickly tags in Zachary. Both these men battle it out. Zachary gets Alex in the Anaconda Death Bite. Anaconda Death Bite. Zachary releases it. Justin crawls over to Alex to tag in Alex. Alex comes in and taunts Dark Lotus. Dark Lotus comes in and headbutts Alex. All four men are in the ring. Dark Lotus hits him with a total elimination and leaves the ring where Zachary pins for the win. Then we see a video of Fire going to restock her drinks for the show to find out that some of them are missing. Thinking she's already had a few drinks, she brushes it off and walks away on the phone already making a refill order. After that, we see Clint Mason versus Buck Dodgers. Both men come out fighting, transitioning back and forth between offense and defense. Buck goes to the high-risk district for a pin, but only gets a two-count. Clint goes in for a pin, but Buck actually rolls him up into the small package for the one, the two, and the three. Then in our main event, we have Chad Bartholomew versus Christian Casanova. Chad tries as much as he can to overcome the Rise Men's champion and hits Christian with a dropkick early going for a quick cover, only to get a one count. But that just fuels Christian more, and Christian takes firm control of the match, beating on Chad, then hitting him with a jackhammer, going for the pin and the win. Are you tired of overhyped commercials? Well, so am I. Straight facts here. Come join the VIP group of Pink Moon Estates to gain access to so much especially the 100 for 100 deal. That's right, 100 Lindens per week for 100 prim slash land impact in your rented home. And that's on period. Come live like a VIP at Pink Moon Estates. Whew, and can you believe it, folks? That was just one week. That was just one week in all of Premier Wrestling. Holy mackerel, a lot had happened and we have so much more coming up. Isn't that right? That's correct. We have a lot more coming up to show you. Yes, we do. So, on behalf of myself, I am the Riot, Xander Garcia. And I'm Sabrina Ireland. We will see you next time on Premier Playback.